Now let's talk about the four assignments of the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation has a fourfold assignment in the life of the believer with respect to helping the believer derive profit from scripture and to live an excelling Christian life. Let me repeat myself again, that the spirit of revelation as a dimension of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit has a fourfold assignment in the life of the believer with respect to helping you derive profit from scripture and living an overall excellent spiritual experience. Are you ready? Number one, the first assignment of the spirit of revelation. And I hope you know by now that the spirit of revelation is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Just like every other expressions of the spirit, it is one spirit, but is that he, he has compartments and dimensions of his operation. And one of those dimensions is that he can operate as the spirit of revelation. The assignment of the spirit of revelation, listen, is number one, to give you light from scripture. Write it down. The first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to breathe upon scripture, breathe upon the Bible, and cause that regardless what you are studying, you will find light. Light meaning lessons, light meaning mysteries, light meaning principles from it that help you know God, help you understand his eternal plan, but then also helps you to live an excelling spiritual life. Light me Lord, light me Lord, light me Lord like a candle, light me Lord, light me Lord, light me Lord like menorah, light me Lord. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, The assignment of the spirit of revelation is to give you light. So you can come as a historian, it's not wrong. You can come as an intellectual, it is not wrong. The Bible does not demand that you throw away your brain nor your knowledge of archaeology history. In fact, the knowledge of those areas aforementioned even become a, a great support system when the Spirit of God breathes upon you. Are we together? When the Holy Spirit breathes upon you, then all those other things now add to its profiting. History is not wrong in studying scripture. That's why we learn. We have lexicons, Greek and Hebrew lexicons. We have all kinds of commentaries that we add together as we study scripture. It takes intellect to study those things. They give you contextual backgrounds. Are we together? There is what we call in theology the principles of biblical interpretation. That means how you interpret scripture for your profiting. That is an intellectual guide but it is profitable. That is where you learn things like the law of first mention. You learn the things like the law of single mention. Are we together? The factors that must be in place for any thought to be called doctrine. Not everything in the Bible is doctrine, even though everything is profitable. Comes from the Latin word doctrina, a body of knowledge that transforms a student to be as excellent as his master. Are we together? Are we learning? Church is quiet. This is Koinonia. Mm. So the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to give you light from scripture. You can carry your Bible and read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him, John 3, 16, should not perish but have everlasting life. You will stand there brilliant but confused. What did I do that he died for me? Did I ask him to die for me? Did he have to die? How does a creator have to die to save those he created? That is an expression of weakness. Are you seeing the limitations of intellect? He gave his one and only son. Put it there please. If you read the Bible like that, the first question is, he gave his one and only son. By which wife? By what mother? You see what is happening to your mind? <laughs> Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What is everlasting life? How does it change me? I'm all right. 
If you are poor, it may make sense. What if you are rich? What is everlasting life? I'm staying in a palace. I have a private jet. I have the, what is everlasting life? How does that add to me? I have a PhD. I have an excellent life. Things are working well. How, what is everlasting life? Why do I need it? Because I look at my life and I do not see anything wrong with my life that necessitates the need for any life. I have friends with military. I have friends with the law enforcement agents. I have friends with the legal institution. What is everlasting life? That would be your conclusion if the spirit of revelation does not help you. But when he opens your eyes, the first thing you will see is so loved. So loved. All those controversies fade immediately. The spirit of revelation will guide your heart to the punchline of that statement. So loved. God so loved. And every other verse and statement will just disappear. And there will only be three words striking your spirit. God so loved. God so loved. You will not know when you will break down over that scripture and begin to weep. This is what he did. So loved. So loved. That can birth an evangelical ministry because that when you stand on a crusade ground, the only thing you will hear is God so loved. And you can begin to weep like the patriarchs who wept and we did not understand the basis of their crying. They were not people who were driven by arguments. I was watching one of the documentaries of late Billy Graham and he was having um, a discussion with he was going for a, a, a you know a crusade somewhere and they were having I think a radio or a session with the journalist and the rest and they asked him a very serious question they said how are we sure that your crusade here is not just to come and manipulate people into subscribing to a faith that they do not agree with and he looked and smiled and made a very profound statement he said my message is a proclamation I am proclaiming something that has been done. My, it's, a, it's a message I was sent to proclaim. I am only a messenger. My assignment is not to explain the dynamics of what happened. I am proclaiming what was done, but that in that message there is the power to heal the total man. I said, this is an evangelist indeed. He conquered nations because the spirit of revelation was upon him. So loved and you are standing there and the, the healing anointing can flow through that revelation God so loved that crippled man there God so loved the blind mama at the back of that crusade ground God so loved the stubborn drunkard that came to that crusade ground and rather than being judgmental and being angry because the spirit of God has made scripture to be profitable compassion is the response are we, are, are we seeing now so well on one hand what you are seeing is a controversy. What is eternal life? Another person is seeing God so loved. And from that, these three statements, a global ministry can rise that represents the purposes of God. The first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to help you derive light from scripture. The light component of scripture is what empowers you to become what scripture says. The light component from scripture is what empowers you to become what scripture says. Now I understand some of the statements of our fathers where they would say just head knowledge. Men like E.W. Kenyon, Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory. They would say faith is not mental ascent. Are we together? No, it is not mental ascent. Absorbing the truth intellectually is profitable, but not enough to make you become what it says. As many as received him, he gave them power. When you receive that word, power is derived from it that helps you to become. Power to become. Power to become. Power to become. Power to become a saved person. Power to become a transformed person. Number two, what is the assignment of the spirit of revelation? Are you ready? The first assignment of the spirit of revelation we said is to give you light from scripture. Let me add to that. And then to connect the believer to God's eternal plan. The first assignment of the spirit of revelation is to give you light from scripture 
and then to connect the believer to God's eternal plan. You need to add that. To give you light from scripture, but not isolated light. Light that connects you to God's eternal plan. The same Second Timothy chapter 3. Let's read 14 and 15. The light from scripture should primarily connect you to God's eternal plan. It says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them 15 it says and that from a child watch this thou hast known the holy scripture which are able to make you wise but not just random wisdom wise unto salvation wise unto salvation wise unto salvation the first assignment of the spirit of revelation is helping you to draw light from scripture and then it connects you to God's eternal plan. Can I give you number two now? The second assignment of the spirit of revelation is to help you draw out light or to help you draw out lessons or principles from scripture. To help you draw out lessons or principles from scripture that empower you to walk in total victory. The spirit of revelation helps you to draw out lessons, principles from scripture that empower you to walk in total victory. That means he's not limited to just giving you light that reveals the eternal plan of God. He does not stop there. He's not just interested in your knowing the eternal plan of God. Are we together? He's interested in your holistic victory. That means if the spirit of revelation comes upon my life, either through the ministry of the teaching priest or my personal encounter with him, the first thing in order of spiritual priority is that the light that comes from scripture connects me to understand God understand the state of man or my state in light of redemption to understand Jesus and to understand the gospel and his eternal plan but it does not stop there light will still come by the spirit to give me the uh, a knowledge of the lessons and the principles that I need to learn as touching every other aspect of my life finances are we together relationships how to excel in career those other aspects will not be left out. In order of priority, the focus of the spirit of revelation in bringing the knowledge of scripture for you is God's eternal plan and his program as captured in Christ. But that it also ends to providing holistic victory by bringing light as the lessons and the principles from scripture for your total wholesome victory. Number three, what is the third assignment of the spirit of revelation? Are you ready? Listen and then write. Inspiring the mind of the believer to birth thoughts and ideas that translate to productivity and advancement. The third assignment of the spirit of revelation is to inspire the minds of the believer so that you are able to birth thoughts and ideas that translate to productivity and advancement. Isaiah 11 and verse 2 talks about the seven spirits of God. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, the fear of the Lord. And the Bible says, verse 3, that he shall make you of quick understanding. He will do something to your understanding. Job chapter 32 and verse 8. Elihu spoke and said there is a spirit in man. And he says the inspiration, the same word breath of the almighty. Make it men or give it them understanding. The third assignment of the spirit of revelation. In addition to connecting you to understand God's eternal plan. In addition to providing the lessons and the principles from scripture that make for your total wholesome victory in life and destiny. That means you should not be an excellent Christian and fail in other aspects of your life. In order of priority, you must understand God, his plan, yourself, 
Jesus, the gospel, salvation. But your finances should speak. Your relationships should excel. Your influence should not be in want. Are we together? The spirit of revelation provides the resources, the lessons to learn, the principles to know, to become a totally victorious believer. And then number three, we said, inspiring the minds of the believer to birth thoughts and ideas that translate to productivity and advancement. Please look up believers. Let me talk to you for a moment. If your Christian experience does not translate to a context that makes unbelievers and the territory around you to acknowledge that there is value. Are we together? One, one of my discussions that I'll be having the lecture in is on the role of faith in contemporary Africa. Are we together now? Does faith still hold relevance in civilization or we should throw it away? Do you know why people are asking those questions? Because if there are many churches, many of us men and women of God, but the society cannot, it is not reflected in the society, the value of being a Christian. Are we together now? The society, the government and the principles and the policies that are put together, they may not necessarily be spiritual, but that in the presence of believers and Christians, the God life must translate into productivity and into advancement. I am a firm believer in territorial transformation as proof that you have encountered God. These are they that turn the world upside down. Not from a fanatical standpoint. Are we together? Not from an extremist standpoint. But that you import the value system of the kingdom. And you use it to provide policies that enhance men. That's right. The kingdom. The spirit of revelation helps you to birth thoughts. To birth ideas that translate into productivity. And translates into advancement captains of industry should rise from the Christian fold are we together world changers who love Jesus haven't understood thoroughly the plan of salvation and that you've partaken of it by making Jesus Lord of your life now you are able to take advantage of the resources of intelligence and creativity by the Spirit to bet solutions that transform people that whether people are Christians or non Christians they can come to you and they can see the excellency of your spirituality speak to the growth of society this is what Jesus left the kind of Christianity we are doing in this nation and in Africa I tell you the truth we will keep flattering ourselves for a long time until the world tells us you are becoming a nuisance because our fanatism is not translating to societal transformation and you cannot speak to people in power until you can import the reality of the God life when it changes policies when it stops crime, are we together? When it helps to bring is, and stops, um, you know, all kinds of uh, gender inequality for want of word and all of these things. If because you are a Christian, you treat your wife well. If because you are a Christian, you train the people in your school and the students in your school, that's Christian school. They pass all their work, they are excellent, they are well behaved. You see, you now have the credence to formulate a policy in honor to your faith that government can use because you have results to show. This is how nations are transformed. Nations are not transformed through blind fanatism. The reason is because fanatism is enhanced by small-mindedness. Once your mind is small and you are not global in your horizon, you will believe you are making progress. But there are powers that only understand God as profit to society. Did you hear what I said? You must translate yourself that they can say because a church was planted here, the crime rate in this area just went down. And you can literally use statistics to confirm that from the time this church was planted, on account of the spiritual value that is being communicated from that man of God, that woman of God, that priest, that apostle, that prophet, it has translated to a decline in prostitution. It has translated to a decline in irresponsibility. Men are now taking their place. Families are mended. Are we together? People are getting jobs. All kinds of crime is reducing. Nations and governments will call you 
and say we are not interested necessarily in the God you serve but we want to know what policy runs your organization that produces a kind of profit now you have the audacity to say my policies are derived from my convictions and they will still listen to you because the results are there to show your name is to be hallowed listen the church is the light of the world we are not a congregation of dummies bound by blind fanatism with no profitability to society God is helping our generation to redefine the value of the Christian faith we are not a news and so civilization we may pray in tongues. The world may not understand the praying in tongues. But the creativity that comes from that praying in tongues, they will not deny it. Are we together now? Yeah. This is what God is helping us to do. To penetrate systems and structures. To translate spirituality and give it a context of intelligence that provides value. Value that is applicable in nation building. Value that is applicable in terms of human resources. Christians should not be part of the membership of a church and after five years, they are not productive. They are not helping themselves. They are beggars. Are we together? Waiting for palliatives. What then is the value of the gospel? If you sell me that kind of gospel, I will reject you. In order of priority, it should be connecting to the eternal plan. But the spiritual, the spirit of revelation empowers us. If everybody in this place is able to feed 10 people, can that bring impact to our society? Do you think that it, it, it garnishes, it brings beauty to your spirituality? Last year I had the honor of speaking at the World Conference of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. And one of the things I shared with the people there, thankfully, most or all of them are renowned businessmen, billionaires, millionaires, captains of industry controllers of systems and structures but that most of them if not all of them at least they call upon the name of the Lord and one of the things that I taught there was the wisdom of Egypt even though Moses was called to be a deliverer part of his qualification was that God sent him to Egypt to learn the wisdom of the Egyptians let me submit to you there are many Christians who cannot be good governors. There are many Christians who cannot be good presidents. There are many Christians who cannot be good ambassadors. Do you know why? Fanatism without translating spirituality with intelligence in a way that brings profit to society. Chances are excellent now that if I become some kind of position as a Christian, you see, if my mind does not receive a superior kingdom orientation, to know that my jurisdiction is the globe, revealing Christ, but doing that in a way that is not just fanatical, are we together? That you can be able to statistically prove the value of my knowing God. You see, it is because in this side of Africa, we don't have value for statistics, we don't have value for reviews. Are we together now? In many parts of the world, and if God gives you grace to broaden your horizon, one of the things you will learn is that people don't believe nonsense. When you tell people something works, they will tell you, bring your facts and your figures. That even though the context of what you are communicating is spiritual, if God intended for that gospel to reach men, you should show me statistically. If you cannot show me how they are translated spiritually, show me the moral excellence that was derived. That 10 people, because they came to Christ, society has become better. That an Ambrober called Barabbas, that he encountered Jesus Christ. And because of that, show me statistically, the Bible has a statistical proof of transformation. One prostitute met Jesus and as a result, a whole city was converted. One madman met Jesus and a whole city was converted. Jesus was not a fanatic. He transformed people. Are we together? He was strong on his convictions as far as representing the Father is concerned. But he penetrated systems and structures. Economic systems felt his impact. 
Religious systems felt his impact. Family life systems felt his impact. Are we together? Intellectual systems felt his impact. He entered the temple and he sanitized all kinds of misuse of God's house. This is Jesus for you. He spoke among people and they saw the wisdom in the things that he said. All those who fought Jesus were people who were living in denial, not ignorance. His statement was clear and unmistakable. Nicodemus came testifying on behalf of the scribes and the Pharisees and said, we know. We, are, we know that you are a man sent from God. It's only that because you've won the heart of the people, it has disturbed us too much. We have to create a formula to dampen your influence. And he died, but he rose. This time around, we are the fruits of his resurrection, extending his value system. I have taught you that the gospel is not only a message that saves. The gospel is a value system that can translate society. All the societies today that we celebrate, at the core of any territorial development is their value systems. And value systems are derived from convictions. It is convictions that translate to value systems, that translate to policies that if enacted, they transform people. Moral excellence is first a mindset, a value system that translates to a policy. The spirit of revelation breathes upon your mind. Is someone learning? The church should not be the only one calling us. The Bible says men will say, come let us go to the house of the Lord. Are we together? That somebody who is a non-Christian, because of the excellency of your understanding and your applying scripture, and the corresponding results, undeniable, that flows through your life. Someone who is a non-Christian can come to you like Nicodemus in the night and say, listen, I don't love Jesus, I don't believe in God, but I cannot deny the fact that you're being a Christian, the impact of your salvation experience, the impact and the dexterity of your spiritual understanding, the intelligence that has come from your spirituality is compelling. Can you teach me his ways? It's easy to win poor people on a crusade ground, but you are going to win kings and nations and territories by importing spirituality to a context whose value can be seen and felt in society. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations See Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory said this and I quote. He said, leadership is not about maintaining followers. Transformational leaders turn followers to leaders and leaders to agents of transformation. The end product of the journey to your spirituality is not fanatism and extremism. I repeat, the end point at the back of your journey to knowing God understanding salvation and utilizing scripture alongside the ministry of the spirit of revelation is not to produce a profitless fanatic no an intelligent god will not design such a system translating spirituality to a context that can lead to personal and territorial transformation i refer you to my message commanding salvation over territories. You will become a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ. You will go back to your place of work. Do you know why God does not promote men in the kingdom? Their value will be useless to society. 
their fanaticism will only become a distraction to many and even lead many through anger away from God, not towards him. So God would rather them remain at a level. Promotion comes when profit can be derived. Many of you are administrators and you are business people. Talk to me, intelligent people. Do you promote someone who will not bring profit to the organization? Part of the principles that you use to promote people is you check their performance before that time. Am I right on that? Their performance in terms of delivery, in terms of representing the values of the company. When you see that these people can be a greater representation, you promote them. That is how it happens too in the kingdom. When when God can derive profit from your life, he lifts you so that you will help men see him in a way that properly represents him. The higher you rise, the more confusion you can bring to the name of the Lord if you don't know him. Did you hear what I said? The higher you rise, the more misrepresentation and the more confusion you can bring to the Christian faith and to the name of the Lord. That's why there are people, no matter how they pray and fast, they, are, they will not rise beyond certain things. There is a kind of knowledge they need to take away from their minds. And there is a kind of knowledge about what they need to have so that their rising becomes profitable for the kingdom. Imagine that God gives you access to be invited by the president of a nation as a Christian and you are given 15 minutes to do a national broadcast and you are given the liberty to communicate the matters that relate to faith and then in 15 minutes you can cause war between two countries because of an abuse of influence did you hear what i said i'm not training you to get a job i'm not training you to get food you don't need to be born again to have that the training you are receiving is turning you to a global wonder this is why god is re-engineering your understanding so that he can invite you to the gates of nations there are many believers today, if God ever gave them an opportunity to speak his purposes, especially within a secular environment, there will be wars that will last years because the diplomacy of representing the love of God, you will sell the controversies in the kingdom and so many things and create enemies around the kingdom to a point that the government becomes embarrassed for honoring you and your, your testimony becomes a statistical fact that they should fight Christians in that nation. Are we together? There are many nations today that have been shot towards the gospel because individuals who were ill-prepared had access to the audience and had access to the ears of kings and because they were ill-trained and ill-prepared they did not know how to to translate spirituality to a context that brought profiting to the gospel they misrepresented god and credited it to fanatism the result was that doors shut for the gospel but a change is coming to the body of christ in the name of jesus christ when you give your life to jesus you don't become a dummy you give your life to Jesus and encounter the spirit of revelation. Albeit our focus is not just on prosperity and education and secular advancement. When that becomes the entire scope of our pursuit, it is another kind of error. The centrality of the believer's pursuit must be God, the revelation of God, the state of man. Are we together? If they ask you to summarize the Christian faith and you say, well, God wants to prosper you. He just wants to make you great. You misrepresented God. If you have five minutes to talk about God, what you should talk about is his love connected to salvation. Are we together now? You don't waste that five minutes you have talking about prosperity or advancement. It's a misrepresentation of God. If you have five minutes to articulate your faith, your emphasis should be the central focus of what becomes a pillar of your faith. But if time is extended, you let people know that when he comes, he affects the total man, including your finances. And the way it happens is that the spirit of revelation can make profiting to come out of scripture. Can I give you number four? Hmm. Breathe, Lord. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe upon my life. I receive. I'm 
manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive and manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Hallelujah. Somebody called me. He sent me a text one time. I may not be surprised if he's following. After we put this our agro program and programs to bless the business people and he called me and he said sir his exact words he said pastor sir you don't know me I'm a Muslim I'm not a Christian but we're having a discussion about you and the part that touched me was when I saw that you were not just complaining and that you were doing the bit that you were to train people he said I was touched I'm not a Christian probably he's following he said, I was touched. And then he said, my wife listens to you. This is somebody who is aware. A non-Christian. My wife listens to you. And I will not stop her. Because I have seen the valley. That thing touched me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, most of you don't come from the north. So you will not understand the implication of that statement. You would have you have to live in the north to understand what it means for a man to say listen I'm not a Christian but we discussed you here and based on what didn't he see healing the sick in koinonia that's none of his business didn't he see the dishing out of Greek and Hebrew the point of profiting was when spirituality was translated now when you say God is love to his mind and the mind of his wife they can say yes even though I may not agree with your faith I cannot deny the value and the profiting that your spirituality has produced listen do you know why Billy Graham was one of the most respected preachers he did not waste his time in blind, childish, and mediocre debates. His, his idea was to understand scripture with the same. He was not a fanatic. Billy Graham was not the person who was jumping on stage like some of us. But the intelligence he gave to spirituality brought great honor to the name of the Lord. A documentary about Billy Graham shows, and I'm saying that because it's, it's the, the documentary is there, that the former Queen of England, now late, one time she was in a lot of distress that had to do with her personal life. Among the many people she reached out to for advice and help and counsel was Billy Graham. There were other men of God in Europe, but she reached out to Billy Graham, history says. Are we together? There are many people who will not even study this. All we know is God will do it. And intelligent people look at us and say, what kind of people are these? When you want kings to call you, prepare to talk to them. Once you are talking to mediocre and mean men, and yet praying that God takes you to talk to kings, God cannot be mocked. You reap according to the quality of the seed you sow. You sow mediocrity, you remain with mediocres. So she reached out to Billy Graham, the documentary tells us, and Billy Graham sent her a text with one scripture comforting her. He said, I understand that things happen like this. And on account of her royalty and the things that she should understand that she's human and things happen like this. And then he sent a scripture of comfort. And then the secretary replied Billy Graham and told him how comforted she was on account of that. That was why no government could fight him. Even North Korea allowed him to preach there. Because there were governmental policies that a single nation cannot manipulate. And if a parliament, there are Christians who will be called to speak to UN. There are Christians who will be called to speak to African Union as single individuals. 
that on account of something you say and a correct representation of a king of the kingdom void of blind fanatism ignorance and mediocrity you translate spirituality to excellence excellence that cannot be denied even those who are not saved will call you and say we may not respect your god but translate his value systems into a policy that translates to nation building what you see that we are doing is only the beginning of a fire that can never be quenched Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. I receive, pray, I manifest your power. And your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus. Lifted up, glorified. Listen, look at me. Many will call you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many will call you and say, listen, this organization is in confusion. We hear you are a Christian and we like the context of your spirituality. How much can we pay you? Come and help reorder this organization. Use the same value system that made your church dexterous. Import it to our organization. And you tell them the condition is that you allow me hold a three-day crusade in your area. They say we will sponsor it. If it will help us. Listen, I tell you, the way evangelism will happen in the days coming will shock you. It will be government backing individuals because the profit factor of spirituality we will see the profit of spirituality to nation building that when we are praying in tongues it's not just a fanatic jumping up and down as we are jumping up and down something is leaving heaven and entering your spirit when you have the orientation God will give you the influence did you hear what I said when you have the orientation that represents the purposes of God, God will give you the influence. No man can promote himself. No. Promotion comes from God. Your assignment is to contend with the spirit of revelation. Let him breathe upon your spirit. Breathe upon your mind. Breathe upon your body. Breathe upon your understanding. Erode that mediocre understanding. Erode that mundane understanding. That small mindedness that is focused on self. That small mindedness that is focused on extremism and fanatism. It will not win the nations for Jesus. Learn from Billy Graham. Billy Graham remains an inspiration for me today because of the way he manifested the God life. What a pride to the Christian faith in life and in death. What a pride to heaven in life and in death. Billy Graham made men love Jesus. He made men love the Christian faith. He didn't shout like we did. He didn't run around like we did. But he transported spirituality. The Holy Ghost walked in him. And he brought the gospel in a context that saved nations. Saved leaders. He prayed for leaders. Some of those leaders gave access today. Some of the access we have to the nations today came because of the conviction of the men who were imparted by his ministry. Let me tell you this. Africa, we must tame our excesses. We must tame our idea of spirituality. Most of what we call spirituality is fanatism and extremism that misrepresents Jesus. We will keep making a mess of the continent before the world and bring reproach to the name of the Lord until we understand what the faith life and the faith pursuit is about. There are still over 7 billion people there about to come to Jesus Christ. In preparing my lecture notes for 
the lectures coming, it made me to learn a lot. I explored statistics of all kinds, derived ideas from intellectuals, from the economic realm, and several people like that just in preparing the piece of, you know, thoughts that we'll be sharing. And I learned again how far behind we are in terms of our spiritual orientation. I tell you, is the reason why there are more churches, is the reason why there are more of us men of God, and yet you see that that penetrating power, the gatekeepers have not seen the Jesus they are looking for. Did you hear what I said? The gatekeepers that allow for a free flow of the gospel are looking for a kind of Jesus and a kind of spiritual orientation we have not yet presented. We must grow out of our petty small mindedness and look globally and see to it that there is a burden upon us for the nations. It will not happen through extremism and fanatism. Again, learn from Billy Graham. Billy Graham is an extreme model and a worthy influence. Every believer that knows God and loves kingdom come, evangelist or otherwise, among the many followers you should follow, I tell you, I recommend for you. He is a man. I believe he has his imperfections. I believe he has his limitations. But he is a commendable model to guide your understanding. He is a very intelligent capture of translating spirituality to territorial transformation. Let me give you the final one and then we'll pray. This is koinonia. Hmm. Number four, what is the assignment of the spirit of revelation with respect to deriving profit from scripture, kingdom advance, and destiny actualization? Are you ready? The spirit of revelation activates the various prophetic dimensions in the believer. The spirit of revelation activates the various prophetic dimensions in the believer. The spirit of revelation activates the various prophetic dimensions in the believer. Dreams, visions, word of knowledge, prophecy. There is a prophetic dimension to every believer. Whether you are called to the office of a prophet or not. The prophetic dimension is how you are able to interact with the spirit realm like you have learned here. Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29. Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29. Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward, he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. How many? All flesh. He says, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. The young men shall see visions. Uh -huh. And upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. The unifying factor is that regardless the age range, everyone had a prophetic experience, a dream, a vision, some kind of encounters. The spirit of revelation is responsible for activating the various prophetic dimensions in the believer. So as much as I've spoken about kingdom advance, next week is a miracle service. The word of knowledge will still come. The, the manifestations of the spirit, the prophetic will still come. Are we together? The Holy Spirit helps us to manifest that prophetic dimension within us. Powerful. Jesus, by the spirit of revelation, looks and right from where he is, he says, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathaniel comes to him and says, you do not even know me. He said, no, this is not all intellect. While you were under the tree, I saw you. Ah, he was amazed. He said, Nathaniel, just because I told you this, you are surprised. He said, you will see greater things than this. You with your own eyes, your prophetic being open, you will see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. There is an advantage we have believers. Our lives is not always spiritual, even though there is a spiritual dimension. Are we together? Our lives is not always intellectual, even though there is an intellectual dimension. 
there is a prophetic dimension to every believer God can show you things to come and when he the spirit of truth is come the Bible says that he will guide you into all truth and he will show you the things to come he will show you the things to come he will show you the things to come the Bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him he says but the spirit has revealed it to us he has revealed it to us through his spirit for the spirit searched all things even the deep things of God and the Bible says the reason why he does all of those things is that he would let us know the things that are freely given to us say I'm a spiritual person one more time say I'm a spiritual person the spirit of revelation is at work in me so he activates that prophetic dimension that is the reason why to the glory of God when all the lectures and the discourses are done by night mm, the Bible says while shepherds watch their flocks by night so you can be a lecturer by day and then you wear that regalia and let the devil know that I did not just come with a lecture notes I came in the spirit and the power to dislodge darkness to stir up a fire for the kingdom Mm. Believers, hear me. This Bible contains wholesome profiting to every believer. This Bible, I repeat, contains wholesome profiting to the believer but that the Bible in itself is not flawless archaeologically the Bible is not flawless historically the Bible is not flawless linguistically in fact the Bible is not is not flawless in terms of the accuracy and the facts of the things presented but that the moment the Bible becomes channeled from a lens of the revelation of God, the revelation of man's state without God, the revelation of Jesus as the Savior and remedy to man and creation. Are we together? The revelation of the gospel and the revelation of salvation. The Bible becomes accurate regardless what you are reading and regardless the imperfections that your eye may observe. There is no degree of imperfection in the Bible that sustains the ability to derive a believer who stores it is by the spirit of revelation. Did you hear what I said? You, uh, to, to, the, to, you can never, never be deluded into error if you allow the spirit of revelation to guide your understanding and your interpretation of scripture no you can read the book of Leviticus and all you see are all kinds of sacraments old practices and it may not make sense to you but because the spirit of revelation rests upon you among the many words and you sanctify the instruments of the temple and make sure this one expression will stand out and light comes from it. I come in the volume of the book. It was written about me. To do your will, oh God. I come in the volume of the book. It was written about me. To do your will, oh God. I come the volume of the book it was written about me to do your will oh God one more time I come in the volume of the book it was written about me to do your will oh God it says I and the children that the Lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. You know what a sign is? A sign is a pointer. 
a sign does not point itself it tells you you are close to reality the assignment of a sign is to let you know you are not far from the object of your pursuit so when God makes you a sign and a wonder the requirement to be a sign and a wonder is that you must be close to God so that when people see you not too far from you they see him no matter whatever may come my way I'll follow I'll follow I'll follow it on my heart to teach you this because you see my life changed not just when I honored scripture when the spirit of revelation came upon my life the word of God made sense that the word of God in spite of the supposed controversies in spite of the personalities in spite of the obvious transition in knowledge that happened to some of the authors, it did not disrupt its ability to present the program of Christ completely. Let me remind you tonight again that the accuracy of scripture does not come from its archaeological presentation. The accuracy of scripture does not come from its historical presentation. The accuracy of scripture does not even come from its linguistic presentation or the interpretation prowess. No. It comes from its ability to maneuver through the imperfections and still present the program of God with precision and accuracy. And that in order of priority, the compass, the navigation point for every believer must be to know that the primary assignment of scripture is not for business the primary assignment of scripture is not for marriage the primary assignment of scripture are we together is not for prosperity the primary assignment of scripture is not for increase is not for greatness the primary assignment of scripture is to help men understand god understand the state of man outside god understand jesus are we together now as a representation of the father's love to man understand the gospel and understand salvation in its entirety when that becomes the focal point the true north in your pursuit then the bible will be accurate regardless what it is and then when you have that sorted then the spirit of revelation in partnership with any part of scripture can help you derive profit and value that attends to any other area of your life. So you will find yourself in addition to knowing God, excelling in business by scripture, excelling in your marriage by scripture, rising in influence in scripture, intellectual advantage by scripture. Are we together? Your organization becoming dexterous and profitable. You are a leader with a difference, deriving principles and lessons from scripture. This is how the spirit of revelation operates. The spirit of revelation does not leave us as fanatics, as extremists. No. It translates the value of spirituality to a context that leads to our own salvation, our wholesome victory, and then can help us extend the love, the value system, and the intelligence of the kingdom to all and sundry. This is what we are called to do. This is what we must position ourselves to do. So in the midst of the falling and rising, in the midst of the spending hours and praying, profitably so, in the midst of the burning of night candles, reading scripture, in the midst of consulting other materials, lexicons and commentaries and concordances, you must have this at the back of your mind, that your compass 
for navigating the thoughts of God when you promote your wanting to become a businessman from scripture beyond God Jesus man and salvation the Bible will no longer profit you the mistake we make is not that all the other aspects we are pursuing from scripture are not supposed to bless us but they are not supposed to be the focal point the focal point in the study of scripture is the testimony of the love of God revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus man and creation being the object of that sacrifice are we together and the entire mercy plan is captured in what we call the gospel captured in what we call salvation when you have that as a pillar every other blessing that comes from scripture becomes an addition not a replacement so the idea is not to stop deriving business profit from scripture marital profit from scripture societal profit from scripture intellectual profit from scripture no that would be error but that we must return back to the focal purpose of scripture scripture never contradicts itself with respect to revealing god salvation the state of man and jesus regardless the complexities around the authors the the lives of the authors the bible tells us that god prevailed over the people such that every information there the richest capture and the richest expression of accuracy in scripture is with respect to the knowledge of God and the plan of salvation. So the next time you read your Bible, you can use various verses in scripture to attend to various areas of your life. You are not in error. But when you want to study the Bible for growth, don't study it as a business manual. Study it as a spiritual book that intends to reveal God reveal your state reveal jesus reveal god's program when you understand that you will never be in error regardless what you find there please rise up on your feet no matter whatever may come my way i'll follow i'll follow no matter what to hold hands with someone by your left and right if you can we're going to pray two serious prayers in this place the first prayer is you are going to cry for a fresh baptism of the spirit of revelation Paul said that I may know him he knew many things but his focus was him not that I may know it there were many it's he knew he it was Paul that brought order to the program of God order to how many things be done but he said that i may know him let that be your prayer by the spirit of revelation lord help me to know you help me to understand jesus help me to understand your prophetic program as far as the gospel and salvation is concerned someone is praying praying with seriousness praying with sincerity from the depth of your heart if you are a man of god pray your members are at the mercy of your understanding pray no matter how much you have deviated there is still room to square up your understanding for the sake of those you lead and for the sake of your own growth go ahead and pray the spirit of revelation comes to our lives connecting us to God's eternal plan helping us to understand the gospel to understand salvation and to understand the program of God the spirit of revelation drawing out lessons cautions drawing out principles from scripture that help the believer to walk in total victory the spirit of revelation inspiring the spirits and the minds of believers giving us the ability to birth thoughts to birth ideas that empower us to be productive, that empower us to sponsor advancement at a personal level, at a societal level, at a territorial level. The spirit of revelation, a 
activating the prophetic dimension that is inherent in every believer. Helping us to take advantage of the prophetic resources we have at our disposal to live excelling Christian lives. Dreams, visions, revelations, the prophetic. I choose the way of the Lord. I want to establish the second prayer point. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. One more time, sing it from your heart. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. The second prayer point. Listen, please. The second prayer point is a burden in my heart that I'm sharing with you. We are going to pray for the body of Christ. Lord, let the spirituality in the body of Christ translate to profit and value that exalts Jesus and frontiers the cause of the kingdom. We are tired of fanatism. We are tired of extremism. Are we together? We are tired of the interruptions that our human nature is bringing to the program of God. You are going to pray and say, Lord, breathe upon us. We are available vessels. Let our praying in tongues, let our fastings, let our Bible studies, let our consecrations translate to value that our world can see. Christians and non-Christians, governments, leaders, heads of state, captains of industry that they can see the profit point of serving God through our lives go ahead and pray go ahead and pray pray for the body of Christ pray for the body of Christ we are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but it is put on a lampstand a candlestick and it gives light to all who are there. Take a minute and pray. We pray for the body of Christ in Nigeria. We pray for the body of Christ in Africa. We pray for the body of Christ in Europe. The body of Christ in America, the body of Christ in Asia, in the name of Jesus, let us come as a corporate people into a season where the love, the values, the character, the power, the wisdom, the profitability that comes from being a Christian, the profitability, the value that comes by being a person of faith, let it be translated to nation building let it be translated to territorial transformation in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus if we do not restore the correct context of approaching the Christian faith we stand a risk we stand a risk of deviating a whole generation towards a sincere path that may purport to helping us find God and live meaningful lives and will leave many in disappointment. When you are young, a lot of mistakes in your approach to knowing God may not tell because the consequences are not immediate. But as you grow older in leadership, in age and in life, are we together? The wrong perception about God 
begins to tell on your life, tell on your children, tell on your organization. You can afford to be in error as a young man and the difference will not show. Are we together? But as God begins to help you, as you become a leader in any capacity, you begin to see the effect of your ill or lack of complete understanding of the ways of God. It will deviate institutions, deviate individuals, deviate men. That is the reason why sometimes people purport that the church is where intelligent people come and become dummies. It ought not to be so. A preacher should not make people fools because they came to church. Are we together? So that parents and families will not stop their children from coming to church because they cannot see the relevance of the things that we teach. We stand a risk. I tell you this prophetically. If we do not reorder and redefine spirituality and respect our territories, as we communicate our Christian persuasions. Let us not take the intelligence of the people who are loyal to us for granted. Are we together? The church should not be an expression of caricature, a venting of mediocrity and small-mindedness. We must respect the territories wherein God has planted us. And we must respect the fact that the people who come to us are looking for God, are intelligent people, and have alternatives a man should not carry his wife and children and family as a ceo who loves the lord and come and sit down under the mentorship of a man of god only to learn nonsense are we together and then at the end the man looks stupid his wife looks stupid the children look stupid they cannot see the value of their spirituality their lives begin to go down from the dead they become members the principles that brought excellence, intelligence, integrity, and power to their lives. Those policies are no longer there. It ought not to be so. Are we together? And so I want to encourage you, go back and listen to this message. Are we together? Listen to this message again. Listen to this message again. Listen to this message again. Pray with it download it and listen don't assume because you were here you understood it share it in love with anybody interested in learning god and living out spirituality to a context that profits the program of god and profits the society ignoring the society wherein you are planted is selfishness you must factor in the fact that you came to that society as an object of God's mercy. You must factor in the effect of your spirituality or otherwise and the effect of your orientation on their overall well-being. Extremism and fanatism is the number one religious problem across our continent and plaguing other people. It is extremism that has produced all shades of error that right now governments are grappling to manage at the back of the perpetrators of this thing is a supposed sincere pursuit but it's ended up bringing all kinds of terrorist sects and all of that at the back of anything that destroys society is an orientation and those who perpetrate it believe that they are communicating truth or pleasing some kind of deity somewhere it's important to restore christianity spirituality the faith practice as intended by god have you been blessed tonight